this time we'd like to have a prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Fathers, please be with, with us on this special day that your spirit be present today and for the rest of our days. We want to thank you for the conviction of John to want to be baptized in your name and to want to live his life according to your laws. Loving Father, we praise your name for this moment. We are grateful for the peace and the joy that we have come to know in this world so full of unrest and hate. John Rejo will be standing in the water today because of what Jesus has done for him and for us all. He has come to realize that all of his future rests in him alone. He has made the decision to accept his life and death as his own. Seal this decision with your power from on high. He will be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and according to the example of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, we were going to have a special song at this time. It's a special song, all right? About continuing grace. The chorus, hopefully you'll pick up on it, is... You'll get it.
Thank God for people that are loving me. Thank God for the people I love. Please God give grace to continue in. Please God give grace to continue in. Please God give grace to continue in. To continue in the land we love. I thank God for children that are loving me. I thank God for children that are loving me. Thank God for the children that are loving me. Thank God for children I love. And please God give grace to continue in. Please God give grace to continue in. Please God give grace to continue in. To continue in the land we love man. What weekend is this? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. What a wonderful Thanksgiving song, Jim. Did you compose that? Well, it came through me, yeah. <laughs> Long time ago. Wow. It's been this first time actually it's really been performed. Really? Yeah, what Beautiful a Beautiful done. What an honor. Thank you. That's, <laughs> that's very special yeah. for your son's baptism. Yeah, I couldn't ask for a better time to be no, That's right. <laughs> and Thanksgiving weekend it was so appropriate. Thank you very much. I say, uh, we started composing it back in uh, in seventy, no, eighty-seven or so. It's gone through a lot of traditions, and actually, just about a month ago is when I finally got the final form. Well, wow. it just grows. <laughs> all right, and I trust we all can grow in sp in wisdom and in favor with God Amen. and man. I trust that you all can hear me, okay? I will try and speak up. I want to welcome you all to the baptism of John Reho. As we reflect on the rite of baptism, I want to remind us of how the Apostle Paul described baptism in his letter to the church in Rome. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Romans chapter 6. Verse 3 goes like this. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. We shall also be, I'm sorry, in the likeness of his resurrection. We should walk in newness of life. Knowing this, that our old self that old man is crucified with Christ, 
that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. John has been anticipating this baptism for quite a while. And today, this morning, as we were chatting, he says, I'm looking forward to this cold, watery grave. The water, I'm sure, is not going to be that warm. <clears throat> but think of, it, think of it this way. We've been baptized into Christ's death. How was Christ? How did Christ die? He died by crucifixion. Watching a crucifixion must have been horrible. We often imagine what it must have been like to have spikes driven into our hands and feet and then raised on a pole and dropped into a hole in the ground and just hang there until death stopped the pain. Crucifixion was designed to bring about death in the most painful way possible. Just imagine what Jesus' mother must have gone through as she watched her son being treated like that. Fortunately for John, baptism lacks all that pain and shame and blood. It is a clean, watery grave that he is passing through. The cleansing by water represents Christ's purifying by his blood because it is only Jesus' blood that really cleanses. Without the shedding of blood, the Bible says, there is no remission of sin. Nevertheless, the process of baptism is highly significant. The closing of the eyes, the holding of the breath, the folding of the hands represent death itself. The lowering into the water represents burial. And of course, the coming up out of the water symbolizes rebirth. To be reborn into the family of God. A new brother of Jesus, who is our elder brother, and a, and a member of the body of Christ. The new self rises from the water filled with the Holy Spirit, strong to defeat Satan equipped to produce Christ-like characteristics of love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and gifted to share the joy of salvation with others through the unique set of gifts the Spirit gives him. So John, rejoice in the Lord always since you are placing yourself in the everlasting loving arms of the one who created you and who died to make it possible for you to be with him forever. I want to give you just a word of caution, John. <clears throat> Living the new life in Christ is challenging because that old person that we bury today does not like to stay dead. Your adversary is alive and well, and he's working with power and signs and lying wonders as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's using powerful deceptions. More so now because he's had 6,000 years of experience. Paul tells us, don't think it strange when temptations assail you, and before you know it, you have hurt your wonderful friend. Actually, when we sin, we crucify Christ afresh. It shows the, magnity, the, the, the magnitude of sin, what it, really, it, what it really does. The Apostle Paul understood this very well. In writing to his friends in Galatia, he shared his secret for living a successful Christian life. He told them, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is an interesting statement because it's in the present tense. 
Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, not I was crucified with Christ. Was he crucified with Christ? Yes, for sure. Acts 9.18 tells of his baptism. But just as he found out, John, that old self did not want to stay dead. And so a daily, continuous death is necessary. Paul said the same thing another way. In a letter to the Christians in Corinth, he said, I die daily. But in spite of that, of course, he lived a life of faith in Jesus because Christ lived in him. Again to the Galatians, he wrote, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, and it is his Spirit dwelling in you that perseveres, that preserves you holy and blameless until the coming of Jesus. So consecrate yourself to God in the morning. Make this your very first work. Let your prayer be, Take me, O Lord, as holy thine. I lay my plans at thy feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide with me and let all my work be wrought in thee. This is a daily matter. Each morning, consecrate yourself to God for that day. Surrender all your plans to Him to be carried out or to be given up as providence shall indicate. Thus, day by day, you will be giving your life into the hands of God and thus your life will be molded more and more after the life of Christ. John, think sunflower. Turn to the sun of righteousness, that heaven's light may shine upon you, that your character may be developed into the likeness of Christ. A life in Christ is a life of restfulness. It is a life of joy. Rejoice always. And again I say, rejoice. Jesus said, Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. Your baptism, John, announces to all those witnessing here, online, and to the invisible beings in the entire universe that you have responded to God's invitation. Come, come unto me, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and you will find rest. And that now Jesus is your master and savior, you are about to be born today into the family of God, a child of the King. May God be with you and bless you abundantly from this day forward. Amen. So John, come forward here. We're going to go through a statement of beliefs and a statement of his commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> come right up here beside me, John. <clears throat> So, John, <clears throat> this is kind of like your testimony. Do you believe that there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons? Yes, I do. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins? Yes. And do you believe that through faith in His shed blood you are saved from sin and its penalty? Yes. Do you renounce the world and its sinful ways and have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, believing that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart? Yes, I do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, who is your intercessor in your heavenly sanctuary, and do you accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in your home and before the world? I do, yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you believe the Bible is God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian? That's an important point to consider. And do you covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? I do. Yeah. That's nothing new for you, is it? I mean, that's been your habit for quite a long time. It has, yes. Church is new. But... Church is new, but Bible study is not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Do you accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of His will? And is it your purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the Fourth Commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and the memorial of creation? I do, yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do you look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality? And as you prepare to meet the Lord, um, will you witness to his loving salvation by life and word to help others to be ready for his glorious appearing? I do, yeah. Do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church? I do. Okay. Do you believe in church organization? And is it your purpose to support the church by your tithes and offerings and by your personal effort and influence? I do. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And will you honor God by caring for it, avoiding the use of that which is harmful, abstaining from all unclean foods, from the use, manufacture, and sale of alcohol and uh, tobacco? and any drugs that uh, kind of like street drugs and stuff like that yeah. that bad stuff do you understand the fundamental bible principles as taught by the seventh day adventist church and do you purpose by the grace of god to fulfill his will by ordering your life in harmony with these principles yes i do we studied those we actually read quite a bit of that book on what adventists believe right mm, yeah so um, <clears throat> here's the one John's been waiting for. Do you accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and desire to be so baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and his forgiveness of your sins? Amen. Yes, I do. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. I've asked Andy to come and be a part of this baptism. You know, you have to know that Andy has worked hours and days and weeks uh, combing the town of Grand Forks, looking for souls that were seeking um, a walk with God, a closer walk with God. And uh, when I became, took over the pastorate here uh, in November of last year, I talked to Andy and I said, Andy, I'd like to follow through with you on some of these uh, visits. And so we started uh, visiting folks that Andy had visited and here we came across John and his mother and uh, and his dad and uh, we've been doing Bible studies every week since then and it's been wonderful it's so rewarding to see someone who has studied the Bible on his own I think your mother's been kind of a partner with you right yeah and they've been studying together in fact she is she wants to be baptized but she's in Alberta right now and uh, hopefully when she comes back to Grand Forks, we can arrange for yeah, that baptism. Yeah. Um, so that's been so special. And Andy's had such a big part in that that I thought it would, it would be, uh, well, Andy says a little part. Come on up, Andy. Let's go in the water together. <clears throat> okay. Right enough. Hard enough to get. I think this is far enough. Yeah, that should be yeah. pretty good. Yeah, can we turn yeah. around? Okay. Yeah. Turn around. Turn it on the other side, Andy. Yes. Just turn around. Okay. Face the group there. Okay. Well, what a privilege it is to have this opportunity to bury my my brother in the waters of baptism. You know, it's not the water that cleanses the way of the sin. It only represents the cleansing power of God's blood. And it's his faith in Jesus Christ and his cleansing power is the reason for this baptism. And so because of your faith in Jesus and your longing to be with him forever Amen. and the realization that the power of the Holy Spirit in your life will enable you to live a life of a Christ-like life, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hold my, hold my hand.
Whoa. Okay. Oh man. Nice. Ah, nice. I might want to do a quick dip. Uh, I have a prayer here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Loving Father, I pray for John. I pray for his family. I pray that you will keep him safe in your kingdom until you come. Help us all to be gathered home to heaven with you Amen. as an unbroken church family, as unbroken individual families, together forever, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, thank you. I want to do another quick dip now that I'm in. Um, come on up, John. <clears throat> um, Brother Rob is an elder of the church in uh, Grand Forks, and he is going to uh, lead out in uh, going through the steps to bring um, John into membership in the um, Grand Forks church. So you have to understand that baptism is the doorway to the church. The church is the body of Christ. One who is baptized is born into the body of Christ. When you are born physically, you are born into a family, unless you're illegitimate. But we don't have illegitimate children. We, John is born into this family. And uh, <clears throat> that's an important concept that we have to keep in mind. And uh, <clears throat> in uh, Romans, Paul says, For as in one body we have many parts, and the parts do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually parts one of another. Parts one of another. That's an interesting concept. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. So, um, John, <clears throat> one more question here. Do you believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship? And do you desire to become a member of this local body of Christ, the Grand Forks Seventh-day Adventist Church? Yes, I do. You do. All right. You have someone here that would like to be part of the Grand Forks Seventh-day Adventist Church. Wonderful. By the authority granted me as elder of the Grand Forks Seventh-day Adventist Church, I hereby ask the congregation for a motion to accept John Rayho as a member of this body of Christ. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Thank you. And now before I call for a vote, let us pause to review and clarify what is involved in membership. As the Apostle Paul pointed out to the church in Rome so long ago, each church is really one body in Christ. This means that this body, the Grand Fork Seven-day Adventist Church, is about to decide whether or not to attach to itself a new part, John Rayho. So the question is, how can we be assured that the graft will not only take, but actually thrive. That the resulting union will bless both the individual, John, and the body, the church, as a whole. There is no guarantee, of course, but we can make some promises, some commitments, recognizing that love alone is ultimately the element that will make this union a success. And so, John, in asking to be a part of this body, do you pledge by the grace of God to use your talents, time, and means, the gifts that God has given you for the benefit of the body and the growth of God's kingdom? I do. Be an encouragement to others and to promote unity in the body. Take advantage of the resources the church provides for instruction in doctrine and witnesses. Be willing to receive rebuke and correction. Amen, 
Be a true representative of this body in your relationships with others. Thank you. And now, as a church, we too take this opportunity to pledge our commitment to you in at least the following five ways. If you agree with each statement, please say we do. By the grace of God, we pledge to love John and value him as a part of our body. Amen. Yes, we do. Allow John to be used in the life and witness of the church. We do. Provide John with instruction and guidance in doctrine and witness. We do. Provide spiritual mentorship, that is to show by example the characteristics of a spiritually mature Christian man. We do. Provide a safe and supportive environment for John to develop his spiritual gifts to the honor and glory of God, the uplifting of others, and the edification of the body of which he is to be valued part. We do. Now having mutual pledged before God and each other to abide by the principles of church membership, I'm ready to call for the vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? It's carried. Welcome, John. You are now an official, genuine part of this body of Christ, the Grand Forks Seventh-day Adventist Church. May God richly bless you and use you as we prepare ourselves and others for his imminent return. And Amen. his dad has got a song for us again. So let's have that song right now. And we'll close with the benediction. Well, hello again. Thank you very much. Here's one called Feel the Power. Feel power, feel power, feel power, power of love. Might seem unkind, make life cruel. Turn your inside out, you know that love can do. Feel power, feel power, feel power, power of love. Nothing in this world love can't conquer. No disease can inflict us. Love won't conquer. No anger can uphold. No love will conquer. Feel power. Feel the power. stand for prayer. <clears throat> I pray, dear Lord, that the power of love will indeed abide in all our hearts, that we will experience that indwelling. God is love, and every aspect of God is love. And you, we've been called to show that love to the world. So I pray, Father, that we will be faithful in allowing your Spirit to develop that love in us. So bless us as we go, and uh, may your Spirit continue to abide with us, strengthen us, and keep us. For Jesus' sake, amen. Join Nelson Adventist Media on YouTube, Rumble, and Facebook for good sermons, praise time, prep talk, testimonies, health segments, and more.
Well, folks, I want to say thank you for watching our programming. But I would also like to invite you to further our ministry by liking and subscribing both to YouTube and Facebook. That would be wonderful. God bless you.